So as you move into Erlang and Elixir, you will discover concurrency is a very basic f method of how software is composed in Erlang and Elixir. And concurrency is based around the concept of processes. Now, a process on the beam is not an operating system process. Operating system processes work in their own way for their own reasons. Beam processes are much smaller and lighter. A beam process basically takes about two kilobytes of memory. Um, at least to start, it may take more as you, uh, you know, of course, do stuff in it. But um, to start with, it takes two K of memory and it runs independently. It has its own heap, so its own memory allocation. There's no global garbage collection to worry about. Its own stack, and it's completely independent of anything else. If it dies, it doesn't hurt anything else. It just hurts itself. So you start a new process using this function spawn. Now spawn has a couple different variants. I'll go through them all. The first one is spawn one, and that takes an anonymous function as a parameter. So you just give it an, a, a fun and it runs it. And when it comes to the end, the process ends. The second one you'll see is spawn three, which takes module function and arguments. It does the same thing. It's just if you have a named function from a process, that's how you'd start it. You also have a version spawn two and spawn four that basically prepend that with the name of another Erlang node. So if you're running distributed Erlang, you can say, okay, run this process over, you know, that node over there, and it'll run in that node over there. Otherwise, exactly the same. And spawn returns a data structure called a PID. A PID looks like this when you run it. PID stands for process identifier. You treat it as an opaque data structure. You don't have to worry about its internal structure. It's just, but it looks like three integers. If the first integer is zero, that means it's running on your local machine or your local node. If it's another number, it's running on a different node in the cluster. But that's useful for sort of debugging purposes, but in practice, you can just treat them the same. You can s treat any PID like any other PID. Pretty much, there are a few exceptions to that, but that is how Erlang spawns processes. If you liked this video, please subscribe and like it below, and I also will have a mailing list that I'm going to create. You can get more Elixir and Erlang tips from me, uh, so please sign up for that. Uh, also find the link below and you can follow me on Twitter at ZKesson.